good guys? Welcome to my setup tour. Now, keep in mind this setup is about 95% the way there. I wanted to get my wire management done, except I'm an idiot and I screwed up my cable management. I will show you guys. It is funny. The mistake I made was dumb. However, the only other two things that I really want was I want to get these wall panels over on this wall and I want some RGB glowing behind these monitors. Other than that, my setup is basically done. It's super functional and I feel like it's pretty practical. Maybe this setup might inspire you to have a very small space to make the setup the best you can with the limited space you have. I want to do this running gun style. I'm going to use my camera and I'm just going to point and shoot and show you guys my setup. Hope you guys enjoy the setup. All right, guys. So as you can see, I'm in a pretty small space. I'm using the ultra wide camera on my phone. It doesn't make it look any bigger. I'm using a medium sized desk and yes, I know that it is one of those like gamer style desks where it's got the red trim, it's carbon fiber top, but I really like the carbon fiber top. So I went with this desk and I quite like it. All links to anything that I have will be down in the description. I don't remember the brand of this desk. It was basically one of those random sellers on Amazon, but it holds up really nice, can hold quite a bit of weight. I got everything mounted to my desk as you guys can see. So we're gonna start with the PC. Now I've been having issues with the case. The case fan RGB doesn't want to stay on. I'm pretty sure I have it plugged in just fine. I opened it up and I checked and nothing seemed out of order. So I can't quite figure it out, but the front fans and back fans will turn off. The button here for LED doesn't do anything. As you see, I'm pressing it and nothing happens. So I don't have the RGB matching, but the color of the fans is what I want. I just got to download some software to get the color of the CPU cooler and RAM to match. But inside the PC is a Ryzen 5 5700X and a Hyper 2i2 Halo CPU cooler. I have a RTX 4070 12 gigabyte, not the TI, and it's the Spider-Verse Zotac model. Great card great performance horrendous price the case itself is the montec premium 1000 air i'm pretty sure i said that right and down here you can't really see it but i have an elgato capture card to which needs to be replaced because it doesn't work well with the ps5 to which we will show you in just a minute and the ram is 32 gigabytes of ddr4 3200 megahertz ram it's a t-force delta two sticks of ram i didn't really feel like i needed ddr5 when i was building this pc because originally this build was intended for a 3060 and it's all running on the MSI X570 Tomahawk Max Wi-Fi. That's the build. So I forgot to film this one part. Uh, this is my chair. It is the Cities or the Sidis. I'm not quite positive how to pronounce it, but the Cities T50. I absolutely love it. I got it in blue and white. I think I really wish I got it in black. It's really, really nice. It's got really nice mesh quality. It's not rough on your skin. It does sound rough, but it's really not that bad. The headrest is okay does the job but it's not incredible and the armrests they're soft ish but they're not just soft enough so i added these to give it a little bit more height and to fix the problem with them being too rough however they are too short this way so if i'm sitting up against my chair let's say i'm up against my chair the problem with them though is that they are too short this way so if I'm sitting at my desk, as you guys can see, it does not go far enough. This is as far forward as they can go. So that really sucks. However, the rest of the chair is super functional and it's got waterfall front that I really like. Now, funny enough, I live in a slanted apartment so I actually got rid of the wheels on the chair and put little gliders and I do not regret it. It's got all the features you would need. The seat tilts forward and back, slides in and out. Chair obviously goes up and down. You know, you can recline in the chair. All the stuff that you would expect from a chair and some. Back to the rest of the video. This is all the stuff that I actually look at every day. So everything is running through this monitor, the Alienware AW. 27 23 DF. I literally had to pause the recording just to check because I could not remember the model name, but it's a 1440p 280 hertz gaming monitor. It's technically 240 hertz that can be overclocked to 280. I tried running it at 280 and it is not that stable, so I have it running at 260 hertz and that's where I could get it to be pretty stable. It also has HDR 600 certification and it is super, super color accurate. I'll put on the screen what the specs are for that. And over here, I have the Scepter 27 inch 144 Hertz monitor. 
It's 1080p and it is basically just my monitor for watching the stream back or if I'm trying to multitask, if I'm like writing a video over here, I have my research over here, or if I'm editing here, I'll have all my files over here. Basically, this is just my secondary monitor. It is actually quite color accurate. It has 100% of the sRGB color space. It also has a pretty good pixel response time. I did try gaming on it, but again, it's 1080p and I have this over here. So this is just my secondary monitor, but I do actually highly recommend it if you are on a budget and you want a main monitor i genuinely think that this is a great option for a main monitor truly do but that's my two monitors they're great this thing though is a bit overpriced in my opinion now onto my camera i'm rocking the canon m50 mark ii it is a 1080p camera first and foremost it can do 4k but it's cropped it's not that great but this is what i shoot all my videos with on my b-roll i stream with this because it can do clean hdmi i have a dummy battery for it Love this camera and the stock lens is actually pretty good um, i'm still rocking the stock lens it's a wide angle lens it can go down to f 3.5 so it's not super wide open but it does the job now i know most people would use the elgato key lights for their uh key lights but this was literally half the price as the dasney led panel and it is super bright it even comes with a remote that you can use to control it with and yeah I love this thing. No app, can't use it with the stream deck, nothing like that. It's not fancy, but it is fancy enough for me. I'm super happy with this. And these are the Sonic 3D hexagon panels. I like the design. I really like the 3D aspect of them. And I'll be putting some more over on this side to try to like connect the walls together. And I feel like it'll help with the audio because I'm sure you can tell even in this video. The audio is a little bit echoey, so I definitely want to deaden the sound a little bit more by adding a secondary panel. And for my microphone, I am rocking the Rode Procaster. Love the sound quality of this thing. It really sounds good with my voice because I have a bit of a higher pitched voice. And this kind of gives it a little bit more depth and richness to my voice. And it's literally half the price of a Shure SM7B. Most people buy that microphone because that's like the industry standard. But I think this thing sounds pretty much just as good. But some might say that it's a little bit too dark, but for my voice, it's great. So this is on the Rode PSA-1 mic arm. Now, yes, this thing is quite expensive, but I went through about three or four of the cheap 15 to $30 mic arms and they all broke on me. Honestly, if you're gonna get a mic arm, invest in a really good mic arm, you'll save more money in the long run. It's a higher price up front, but a lower cost over time, trust me. Clamps right to the desk nicely and yeah, I love this thing. So let's get into this stuff here. My main setup here. Now, it's not the cleanest setup, but it's functional and I'm very happy with it. So I have the two Stream Decks. I have the original Stream Deck, not the Mark II. And then I have the Stream Deck Plus. This thing was a game changer. Being able to control all of the different submixes on my stream, my game audio for the stream, the game audio for my headphones, the music volume, any type of volume that I need to control over, I can control it. And you have multiple pages where you can swap back and forth if you need more. These can have stacks. This is an amazing piece of kit. And then this I use for opening software, for macros, and when I'm streaming, I use it for sound effects and stuff like that. This is actually my scene switcher for my streams, and this is my soundboard for my streams. Now, I wouldn't have any audio at all if it wasn't for my Wave XLR. I used to have a Go XLR, and I'm sorry, to be honest, this thing just is better. However, you could argue that without this, this isn't as good as the Go XLR, and I can understand that, but having the Elgato Wavelink software, even with just this, is a game changer for me. I really did not like the Go XLR software, so I switched. On top of the fact that now the Go XLR is basically vaporware because they stopped supporting it. For speakers, I'm using, sadly, they don't match in color. If you see, they're actually green. When I bought them, I didn't notice that they were green, but they're in the back in the shadows so can you really tell that much they're green not really so i don't mind the one thing i really don't like though is that i have to stick with this this rgb settings that i cannot change the rgb settings but 
They sound really good for the price. I mean, I think I paid like 50 bucks for them. Not bad. And they have a bass chamber in the back with this tweeter in the front. They have really decent sound quality. I really can't complain. I cannot remember the brand name of it, but it is a 15 watt wireless charger for your phone, a three watt charger for your watch, and a five watt charger for your headphones. It's really nice to be able to come home, sit at my desk, and drop my phone on, my watch on, and my earbuds on all at the same time. Some people would probably have that at their bedside, but I like having it at my desk. I really do like being able to sit at my desk and have everything right there available to me. And I could be sitting here doing my thing, having my, my phone put away, and my phone's charging while it's put away. Very simple concept, I know, but I really love this thing. And it folds down, and it folds. This is really hard to do with one hand. And it folds up. Love this thing. My mouse, my headphones, and my keyboard swap out a lot because I do do reviews and stuff. But the one thing that stayed on my desk the longest is this mouse. I still love this mouse. This is the Razer Viper V2 Pro. I just love this mouse. I added the grips on the side because without the grips, I don't find it to be that comfortable. But with the grips, I just can't get away from this mouse. I keep trying other products and I just, I keep coming back to this mouse. I love the shape, I love the weight. I just really love this mouse. Highly, highly recommend this mouse. This keyboard, funny enough, uh, originally my main keyboard was the Keychron V1, but then I tested this keyboard for my secondary setup in my bed. So I wanted to have a gaming setup for my bed so I could like still use my laptop as a PC. So I bought a wireless keyboard and I bought this for that setup, but then it came in and I ended up liking this keyboard way more than the Keychron. So I swapped out the keycaps, I put it over here, I tested it for a while, I made my review, and I genuinely think that this keyboard is better than the Keychron, truly, and it's cheaper, and it's still just as customizable as the Keychron. Hot swaps, uh, PCB, foam inside, looped switches, looped stabilizers, and it's all interchangeable. Really, really love this keyboard. I have the yellow linears. They're not super light, but they're not heavy. They're like right in the middle. I think they're really good for gaming where you don't misclick like you would for a speed switch. And I don't think it's too hard and fatiguing like a black ink switch. So this is a custom aviator cable. I cannot remember the brand, but I will put it up on screen so you guys know what brand it is. Really like the quality of this. It's really nicely stitched. It's super stiff. It holds its shape really well. And it's got a nice fat aviator right here. I really like it. And the connected by type C. And the most important thing to me is your headphones. Audio, in my opinion, is the most important thing. For audio, I use the Bear Dynamic DT770 Pro 80 ohm as my main headphone. So if I'm not feeling like having headphones on my head and I want something a bit more comfortable and a bit more relaxing, I switch over to my Moondrop Arias. I absolutely love these. I paid $78 for these. They sound so good. A bit extra bass, uh, but they are very wide sounding. Amazing directional audio. The separation that they have is super good. And again, they have very clear highs with very deep low lows, but it's not like a too bassy sound. It does have a bit of a thicker sound signature, but I think that they sound amazingly good. And I honestly think that you could even mix music with them uh, with a bit of confidence, to be honest. And I also think that they're really good for competitive play. Truly think that if you want to play like Call of Duty or CS2 or Valorant as a competitive player, I do think that those or the Bear Dynamics are two amazing options. And this right here is where I put my wireless headphones. So these are my Sennheiser Momentum 4s. Absolutely love these. Great for gaming, great for travel, great for music. First headphones that had noise canceling that didn't bother my ears. These are great. I, I really think that these are a great pair of headphones. However, I really don't like that you can't turn off the noise cancellation. It's either active noise cancellation or transparency mode or somewhere in the middle, but not just off. And that's one of my biggest complaints about these headphones. Regular Xbox Series X controller. I only really use this as my secondary. I'm just not a big fan of this controller, to be honest. Here's my PS5 DualSense controller. Really love the shape of this controller. It's actually my favorite controller of all time. This thing is gonna be my next video. The Game Sir G7, it's wired. Don't get me wrong, I know it's not wireless, but this thing is great. I love this controller. It's so comfortable. It's got back buttons if you need them. 
It's got amazing software, really good product. And this headphone stand, I can't remember the brand. I'll put it in the, in the description. This thing has 145 different lighting modes. You can use the software to control it. And it's also got onboard buttons and you can charge your headphones or a controller or a phone or whatever off of it. However, it's only five watt charging. It's not that great, but it's pretty cool that you can have something on here and have a charging at the same time time pretty cool i paid 23 dollars for it i think well worth the money now we're going to move on to below the desk now my wire management down there is tremendously bad you guys ready dun 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 i bought raceways but the problem is if you see those bars right there yeah those bars are in the way i had the wires going around the bars by accident don't mind the dust and yeah so i have to completely take these down and redo all of it but down here and i need to get this up a little bit higher because it is collecting dust down here so i need to get this playstation up off of the ground because i thought putting this here would help but as you can see i didn't dust this on purpose because i wanted to i wanted to make a point to you guys so this is just from a couple of days so imagine what's building up inside the PlayStation. If you have your PlayStation down on the floor or your PC down by the floor, definitely move it because it is getting dust collected way faster and way more easily than if you were to have it lifted up off of the floor. And again, I cleaned this not that long ago, I swear to you. And it's already like that. So I can't even imagine what it's looking like inside here. That's why the PC is no longer on the floor. The dust and the dirt that comes off of whether you know you step outside and you come back in, sit in, at your desk, or building up. I live by a busy road. My house is always dusty. And that's why you should always keep stuff like a PC, PS5, anything off of the floor. But anyway guys, you know, I just want to say that um, I'm super appreciative of the fact that I even have anything like this. If I show you on screen right now what I came from, the original OG setup, um, and growing up, you know, I didn't have much. I grew up very poor, so, you know, I didn't have a lot of things, you know what I mean? Like, I didn't grow up being able to get the latest and greatest. I didn't grow up having even the middle of the road, you know, like, we really struggled to get by growing up, and I'm very fortunate now that you know i can even have something like this but the thing is is material things are not the most important thing in the, in the world you know yeah i review a lot of products yes you know i might have a decent setup but um i'm appreciative that i have these things i just feel very fortunate that i can even have the option and you know 13 17 year old me would have dreamed to have a setup like this and now 27 year old me does have it you know what I mean? Yeah, and I hope that if you have a small area in your room, this maybe inspired you to make a setup like this. Again, mine's still kind of a mess, so I wouldn't really say that it's like a setup to live up to. Anyway, guys, have a good one. Peace out.